everyone. Welcome to the Suspense Squad. We're so glad you're here. And tonight we have Kristen Hogreff Parnell joining us. She is um, telling us all about her first romantic suspense called Take My Hand. We are excited to hear about it. So Kristen, if you have your book, if you can show our audience. Yeah, it's a beautiful cover and it's perfect for winter. Yes. <laughs> So how about you read us the back cover copy? Sure. Okay, it says, don't find us, we'll find you. Trauma therapist Kaylee Colbert needs a vacation from her job and a ski trip with her church singles group seems like the perfect way to unplug. But while in the mountains, she learns that her last client was murdered hours after their meeting, and she wonders if the notes she's receiving from a possible stalker hold a more sinister warning. On the trip, ex-boyfriend and entrepreneur Reef Mitchell wants to give the relationship another chance, but Kaylee questions if his past and priorities could ever mesh with her life. When her clients' underworld connections catch up with her, she has no choice but trust Reef to help her stay alive, solve her client's mystery, and bring the killers to justice. That sounds awesome. Nice. So Thanks. good. I'm so glad to be here. This is so fun. Hey, oh, we're going to ask you a few questions tonight, and uh, we're actually going to start with Loretta. So Loretta, go ahead and ask your hey. question. Hey, Loretta. Well, I wanted to congratulate you on your baby. Thank you. Yes. How, if if how something I say doesn't make sense, we just blame it on mom brain. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you have a new baby, I was going to ask you just how you manage your time now and you can get your words in. How do you get your writing in? That is such a good question. And the answer is yes and no. <laughs> so with this release coming out, any spare minute I've had has been like writing guest blog posts or like this, you know, doing an interview while my husband has the baby, you know, after we're both off work. So I've been managing to meet all of my guest blog commitments and all of those deadlines. But as far as writing something new, I'm, I'm still waiting for that to happen. <laughs> the good news is that I finished the second book that was contracted in the Crossroads Suspense series before I had my baby. So I knew, I was like, I don't know, this is new territory for me. I'm a new mom. I don't know what this is going to look like. So I'm really glad I planned ahead. So I'm ahead of deadline. And I'm just hoping that once we get past this four month sleep regression that nobody warns you about until you get there, um, that hopefully he'll, his naps will consolidate and I'll actually have a little bit more time. So we'll see. It'll happen. I'm, I'm trying not, I'm oh, not yeah. stressing, it'll but it'll get there. <laughs> You're right. Thank you. Yeah. And any of you that are moms that have any tips for her, y'all can send you know, them my way. Drop them in her in her DMs over there. Yep, that's right. Okay, well, that's awesome. So the next question is going to come from Dana. So Dana, how about you ask your question now? Okay, well, congratulations, Kristen, both Thanks, on the Dana. new book and the new baby. And my tip for you is learn the skill of dictation. Mm. Because you can be washing those bottles and dictating a scene or getting your power walk when you need a little exercise and getting some words because sometimes you just don't have time to sit down at a computer screen so but true. my second tip with that is always go over and edit what you say because dictation kind of comes out garbled sometimes right so. like phone texting you know text to speech you always want to edit that before you hit send <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I still tip. need to learn to edit that. <laughs> but anyways, my question is, uh, what does it look like for you when you have, um, from like you're thinking of a book to release day, what does that process look like for you? Yeah, so from that really special moment when I got the call from my agents, you know, that my, my book had been contracted with Mountain Brook Inc. Um, and I can just remember calling my husband and I'm like, ah, they accepted or the contract and well, all the negotiation process that our agents do. And those, my amazing agent, Stephanie has just handled that all beautifully. But from that, you know, excitement 
you know, it was really almost two years to get to this place now. So when people hear that, oh, you published a book, they think it happens like, you know, snap of a finger. And it's not the case at all. It, it's a long process from contract and then, you know, traditional publishing, you're looking typically at two years, sometimes even more to the actual date. So then it was really, you know, working through edits on my end. And then once I started working with the editor, working through her edits, I discovered a really neat, and I forget, you know, mom brain, can't remember the exact name, but in Microsoft Word, there is a tool that will actually read you your story. And so my husband, okay, you're all nodding your head. Right, you all know this. Yeah. Yes. So we were doing a road trip and I just listened to my book the whole way. And I'm like, oh, you catch so much more when you hear, you know, hear somebody else reading it. So that was really helpful. But then, you know, working with my publisher and my publicist who's like, I need a press release. I need, you know, I need to work with you on this. And it's just a lot of little details that, you know, have to happen before release day can get here. So everybody sees release day, but they don't see everything that went into the process to get there. I know you all know that, but, you know, aspiring authors, I just want, you know, would encourage them, don't get discouraged in the time that it takes because it is worth it. It just really is a lot of behind the scenes work that no one sees but you. That is so true. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thanks, yes, Dana. I think I think that Hollywood has portrayed, you know, writing as, oh, it's instantaneous. And, you, you know, I wrote a book and now somebody wants to publish it. And they're going to make it into a movie and everything's great. And, they, and you're going to make like millions of dollars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I see, and I see, and all, these, I see all these articles like, you know, make passive income, write a book, write a book. And I'm like, yeah, write a book, make three cents on it. <laughs> <laughs> spend your life savings promoting it you know <laughs> yeah, right? exactly does not work the same way no <laughs> so true yeah every author that you see in a movie is rich and they have a big office and they've got <gasps> and personal assistance yeah that's yeah. what i love we're all the personal assistants i'm like yeah, i wish i had a few of those right <laughs> that would be great someone wants to do my laundry for me i mean <laughs> exactly yeah Okay, so Shannon has a question for you next. I do. Congratulations, Kristen. I have had the privilege of reading this story and I loved it. It was so cute and so good. And it kept Yay. me just turning the pages right to the very end. So congratulations. Thank you. My question for you is tell us who your favorite character was to write in this story and why. So this one, like, I hate to sound cliche, but it was probably my heroine, which wasn't the case necessarily in my young adult trilogies. My my more recent young adult trilogy, my favorite character was actually a secondary character. So, and I feel like sometimes that's more interesting when you talk about like the side character that you ended up loving more than everyone else. But in this book, I would say it probably is my heroine, Kaylee, just because at least for the first part of the story where she goes to Beach Mountain on this ski trip, I was able to take experience that I had and put it into her story, which was just so much fun because several years ago, I got to go skiing and see snow for the first time. And just, you know, it sounds super romantic. You're going to, oh, I'm going to go skiing and it's going to be fun. And they don't tell you that you fall and you hurt yourself. And snow <laughs> is not really soft when you fall on it. <laughs> so um, just her whole painful learning curve. I just, oh, I ate that up because I'm like, yes, I'm going to make her suffer because I suffered. So that was a lot of fun. But I, I mean, I loved writing all of the characters, really. And I think as writers, we kind of give each character, even our villains, like just a little piece of ourselves so that we can make them really relatable. So even even Val, as much as I hate her, I also <laughs> love to hate her. So yeah, uh, but I, I think Kaylee was probably my favorite here. The one that annoyed me the most in your story was the girl who was the, kind of the annoying friends, not the friend friend. There was like a, she had like a good friend, but right. there was a little girl that kept running around and telling everything. And I wanted to slap her. I was like, would you shut up? <laughs> yes. And that's, a, there was a funny story about her. So before I had actually addition. written the, yeah. what? She was a great addition because she was just, she just caused, she just stirred up trouble. She, and she wasn't even the villain. You know, she, yeah, I know. She was, she's just a, a ditzy character. I had a lot of fun with her too, but I almost got in trouble with her because 
when I was, I'd written my first draft before I contracted with my agent. <laughs> And I accidentally gave her my age. She had my agent's name and I didn't connect to those dots until my editor's <laughs> like, did you mean to name your agent the ditzy gal? And I was like, no. <laughs> so she got renamed. She's no longer my agent's name. She's now Brittany. Nothing against Brittany's in this world. I just had to grab the first name that came to my mind so that my agent didn't think I thought she was ditzy. <laughs> Great. But yeah. yeah, you know, I'm always terrified that I'm going to name somebody a character after somebody that I'm, I know that I'm not thinking about yeah. and, and have that happen. So it's, yeah, that, that's yeah. one of my biggest fears. And I'm always trying to look for names <laughs> and the, people that I don't know, you know, or somebody that right. I don't like, have immediately in my life. It's, that's really hard to do. It is that's so funny. hard. And that's why we have that disclaimer, you know. Yeah people who you may think resemble real life characters are not the same person, yep. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, so our last question is gonna come from Darlene. Hi, Kristen, so good to see you again. I know, hey Darlene, I got to meet several of you guys at Blue Ridge and that was so fun. It was so much fun, it was. Congratulations on the baby and the book. So excited for you. I also got a a, ch a, a chance to read uh, it before it released. So, and I enjoyed it as well. So here's my question for you. Tell us something about yourself that we can't find anywhere on the internet. Hmm. I really, you know, I was trying, I'm like, what am I going to say about this one? Like, there's so many ways to answer this question, but I figured I'd pick something at least remotely related to writing. So in college, I was on yearbook staff, which I don't know if colleges still do yearbooks, but when I was in college, they did. And it was so fun because it was a job, but it was also something I loved. But I will never forget my first assignment for sports. And I'm, you know, God bless you if you're sport, sports people. I'm just not. I've never been super athletic. I run because I like pizza, you know, but <laughs> the first basketball game I was supposed to uh, report on, I went, I, I got the camera, I had my little notes, and I think I actually had a recorder, Dana, to your point, I think I had a little, like, I'm going to write and transcribe whatever quotes I get from the coach or the team, and thankfully, our lead camera guy was there to just kind of coach me along because he wasn't sure if I was like capable of using this fancy camera. And I'm like, Gus, this camera doesn't work. I can't get any shots. It's, he's like, let me look at it. I didn't put batteries in the camera. <laughs> and I was like, I'm so getting fired. <laughs> and Gus is like, I'll never tell anyone. And we kind of from that day on had a trade off because he liked taking pictures and he hated writing and I loved writing and I hated taking pictures. So I'd write his articles and he'd take my pictures. <laughs> Good old Gus, you're gonna have to make him a character. I know he would make us. a great character. He really was. He was a great guy. But yeah, so nobody. I don't think anybody really knows I was on your book staff. But that was that was a fun time. Had a lot of good laughs. Met a lot of fun people that way. Oh, I love that. That's great. <laughs> well, I think it's all of our questions. And Kristen, we've had so much fun talking to you. We're so excited about your book. And hold it up for us one more time. Let everybody see it. It's out. It came out November the 14th. So it's available everywhere you buy books. So definitely go check it out. I've got a copy. I've started it. I haven't gotten finished yet, but I'm, I'm loving it so far. So we are just happy to have you here and everybody have a wonderful holiday yes. season. Yes. We'll see you next year. Thank Merry you, Christmas. everyone. Great to be here. <laughs>